Well, I am Jinny King, the host of today's talk. Before we get started, please turn off your cell phone or switch into silent mode. Thank you. How much do you know about the Vietnam War? The things I know are war broke out for reasons of ideological differences between the North and the South. And the Vietnam War lasted from 1950 to 1975. Also, Korea sent 300,000 troops to Vietnam to help South Vietnam for eight years. However, so many young lives were sacrificed in the war, and there are still a lot of people who are suffering from the after effects. Inno Hami, who is the speaker, will present about the Vietnam War. Remember, if you have any questions to ask the speaker, Feel free to write them down on a slip of paper. If you did not receive a paper slip, please raise your hand and a JS volunteer will come and give it to you. These questions can be asked during the Q&A session. Thank you for joining us today and please welcome Inno Hami with a big round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my honor to be here today to talk to you about Vietnam War. And for those who don't know me yet, my name is Ding Nu Hami, and I'm from Vietnam. Uh, now I'm an exchange student at Chang'an National University, and um, two semesters already passed, and I'm coming back. I'm going back to my home uh, in two weeks, on December 27th. So, um, well, Welcome you all here today. And our topic today, as you already know, is the Vietnam War. Well, to what extent do you know about the Vietnam War? Quite a bit. So but I I I think that you all sure about one thing. Vietnam is the world's chief country. We have a long history of being invaded by a lot of powerful countries in the world. Um, so why? Why Vietnam? Why was Vietnam was target of a lot of powerful countries in the world? But as you can see in this map, Vietnam is situated in the heart of Southeast Asia. You know, with the more than 300, uh, 3,000 kilometer of spectacular coastline. And um, you can see in this map, we have a long coastline. Yeah. And Vietnam occupies more than 100, uh, more than 1,000, near 2,000 kilometer from its border, the border with China to the southernmost tip. Eastern Sea, and we measure uh, 330,000 kilometers per kilometer. So, uh, with a lot of natural resources like oil, gas, mineral resources, um, forest. Uh, so, it uh, offers ideal advantages for economic development, trade, tourism, and most importantly, as you can see in this map, once you occupy occupies Vietnam. You can occupy all the waters. Let's see. Here. All the waters. So that's why Vietnam was the target of a lot of countries in the world. Um, I think it's very important to know uh, a little bit about background before the US came to Vietnam. Well, before the US came, we had a conflict with France, uh, I mean, late French in the China, along with Laos and Cambodia. Laos and Cambodia. Yeah. And we began to fight for our independence during World War II. Uh, and at that time, our revolutionary leader, leader was Ho Chi Minh, which, were, um, which was our very first president, a patriotic communist. Yeah, this is his image. And um, the French lost the war uh, 
uh, having decisive battle at Thien Bien Phu, a province, um, a province in North Vietnam. And in 1954, the French retreated from Vietnam. All the troops retreated from Vietnam, and this brought Vietnam and France to a peace conference in Geneva. Uh, Geneva, Switzerland in 1954. In 1954, uh, to be more exactly, in July 1954, uh, a peace conference took place in Geneva, Switzerland, uh, with the presence of um, Vietnam, the US, uh, the France, and the Uni Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, or we call it US U USSR. Um, at the conference, um, all the sides agreed with a ceasefire between the France and Vietnam. Uh, between the France and Vietnam, uh, and the conference reached uh, an agreement of temporarily partitioning Vietnam into two main parts: the south and the, the north and the south. And the the, uh, the north was under under the leadership of Ho Chi Minh, which was our first president. Um, in the South, in 1955, the Republic of Vietnam was born under the leadership of Ngo Dinh Diem. Yeah, this image. And staunchly anti-communist. Um, the South, in the North, um, Ho Chi Minh, Ho Chi Minh set up his headquarter uh, in Hanoi. And in the south, you can see Zio was elected president in 1955. And as a settlement, uh, three uh, national elections were expected to be held in 1956. But Zio refused to allow the elections because he knew exactly that Ho Chi Minh would win the election. So uh, also America, or America got involved in the process of preventing the election to be to be held. So um, it was considered a milestone which marked the involvement of um, America in the Vietnam War, or it can be considered an asset. So uh, why did the United States get involved in the Vietnam War? Well, it's so hard to, uh, to answer this question. This is very controversial. Um, but at that time, uh, American policymakers uh, developed a theory named as domino theory uh, as a justification for the involvement of the US in Vietnam War. So, domino theory. The US had come to see South Vietnam as a domino that they couldn't afford to lose. Because according to them, if the South Vietnam fall to the communists, so the neighboring countries like Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, Burma, or Myanmar today, India, India, Pakistan will also fall like dominoes. And even uh, Australia will be at risk. Yeah, and the capitalist country didn't want it to happen. So that's why they got involved in Vietnam War recently. And uh, now let's get back on our point, uh, Ziems. Uh, the South Vietnam and Ziems uh, uh, Ziem, Ziem claimed that the South Vietnam was under attack from communists in the north. So that's why he sought help from the, uh, the CIA to identify opponents, identify those who wanted to bring his newly created government down. Um, and he also passed a repressive acts, repressive, uh, repressive series of acts, known as Law 10 over 9, uh, 59, that made it legal to jail, jail communists or whoever they call that communist, um, without bringing formal charges. And this created outcries against Ziem regime across the country, a lot of outcries. 
a lot of protests, and um, a lot of uh, a lot of people were arrested and jailed without any reason. Um, and this um, this urged Vietnamese pe communists in the north to form a organization, a former organization, to fight back um, the, uh, the U.S. and the South Vietnam. Uh, so that's why on December 20, in 1916, the National Liberation Front was born. And basically, it's a communist-led organization. Um, yeah. It brought together all the communists and non-communists uh, to unify the country, anyone could join, as long as you, uh, as long as you, you, you oppose uh, ZM uh, uh, regime or um, or the US. And um, well, uh, and between 1963 and 1968 was uh, the escalation of the conflict. Uh, the war was escalated because uh, of the con continuing political problems in Saigon. Uh, Zim claimed that his government was under attack from the communists in the north. So he sought help from the US, um, and the US um, you know, still sent a lot of advisors and troops, infantry, to the, uh, to the South Vietnam to help Zion. And uh, after an incident in the Gulf of Tonkin on August 2nd, in 1964, the war, yeah, you can see this picture. This is the Gulf of Tonkin. Gulf of Tonkin. It's located in the north of Vietnam. Um, uh, well, on August 2nd, in 1964, um, the U.S. The, the, the communist, the communist, uh, had two attacks on the two destroyers, U.S. destroyer, named as um, uh, the U.S. as Macdonalds and the Tony Joint. Yeah, and the U.S. considered it an excuse to to take revenge, and a lot of raids after, after that, a lot of raids were conducted on the North Vietnam. So actually this is also very controversial until now because no one knew exactly it happened for real or not. Because someone said that it's just a story made up by the American to make it an excuse, a reasonable excuse, it's reasonable excuse to make raids on the North Vietnam. But for some for American, uh, they they claim that it happened for real. So it's up to now. It's still very controversial. Um, and of course, the U.S. took revenge. Uh, well, they took revenge um, through three main campaigns. The first one is search and destroy. Um, well, the campaign is very simple as, you know, like the name itself. They, um, the American troops uh, went to the villages, you know, scored the villages for guerrillas. You know, guerrillas, uh, like soldiers, I mean, all unofficial soldiers. Or they call them Viet Cong, Viet Cong. And once they find out, once they find out guerrillas in the villages, they routed up the, uh, the civilians and burned the villages down. Yeah. And um, the Operation Rolling Thunder is not campaign. Uh, the Johnson Johnson administration, after a dubious attack on the two US um, destroyers, uh, he asked for the congressional Resolution made as congressional, uh, uh, named the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. Uh, and this gave the president broad war powers. Uh, the Johnson, Johnson ordered sustained bombing missions over the North Vietnam. Uh, and the bombing missions, known as uh, Operation Rolling Thunder, cost the Vietnamese 
the, the Communist Party to reassess its own war strategies. Um, I, you can see this picture. Uh, this is a picture of um, a lot of soldiers. You know, they were fleeing from the villages because of the bombarding from America. Um, the Operation Rolling Thunder was backed up by phosphorus and napalm bombs. And the latter napalm bombs caused a lot of dreadful burns to a lot of civilians, villages, and caused a lot of death to the innocent civilians. Um, and this is uh, the most traumatizing episode in the war. Our Agent Orange. Uh, Agent Orange is a powerful mixture of herbicides, of uh, herbicides or <coughs> defoliants, which, which destroyed uh, all the forest cover to find out, to identify uh, the Vietnamese guerrilla or the Viet Cong. Because uh, in the war, we, we, the Viet Cong were uh, camouflaged by leaves, you know, and they hide in the forest. So that's why the America used Agent Orange to destroy all the forest, co forest cover to find out Viet Cong. You can see this picture. And it has left a lot of aftermath, aftermath for Vietnamese up until now for our generations. You can see in this picture um, it caused a lot of tumors, cancer, and birth defects like this. A lot of people were born with deformities. Um, and two, uh, two fight for our independence. The North Vietnam has had its own tactics. Um, in the areas held by the National Liberation Front, the communists distributed the land to the peasants. Uh, the purpose was uh, to help the peasants, to help the peasants um, you know, grow crops and provide the South with food, um, rice, and to supply the, the South Vietnam. And by 1973, the, the National Liberation Front held about half of South Vietnam. Uh, they also built large turn complexes, such as uh, Gucci. We have a very famous uh, turn complex in Gucci. It's near Saigon. Uh, and its function was to protect civilians from American troops. Um, well, once Americans bomb the area, they can, uh, you, you know, they can hide uh, in the tunnel complex like this. You can see, yeah, it is a very sophisticated, sophisticated term because uh, has it's been uh, it's been dig really long and deeply in the ground. Um, you can see this upper chain. So a lot of meetings were held in the tunnel, and a lot of civilians were hiding in the tunnels when the Americans went to the villages. And um, the karma flashed holes, which were full of spikes. Uh, spikes are something uh, like a needle-like tips uh, that have been fire-hardened uh, like this, and it coated with um, excrement to cause infection. And um, on the surface of the holes, uh, they, they were a lot of leaps to camouflage the hole. Um, and it, it, um, above, uh, above it, it were the markers to the markers to um, show to indicate that this is the hole to prevent Viet Cong from being from being trapped. Uh, we, call, uh, we also call it booby trap. Uh, and Ho Chi Minh Chao. Um, Ho Chi Minh Chao is a long road from the North Vietnam to the South. We really go this way. We go through Laos and Cambodia to the South. 
So this this um, this role uh, on this on this role is the main you know main road for north to supply the south. So a thousand convoys of trucks carrying personnel and materials from the from the north to the south went along this road. Like you can see, yeah, we this is the Ho Chi Minh Trail, and it goes through Laos and Cambodia to the south. Yeah. Uh, and after a lot of battles of for from so many years, and it appeared on January twenty twenty three, the final draft was uh, in initial the Paris Peace Agreement. Uh, it actually um, this agreement has have been reached after more than four years of negotiation between the, the Vietnam and the America. Uh, it put an end to open hostilities between the United States and North Vietnam. However, the Paris the Paris Peace Agreement did not end, officially end the conflict between the South Vietnam and the North Vietnam. Because uh, after that, Saigon continued to battle the, uh, the, uh, the communist forces. Yeah. But on the morning of April 30, in 1975, the communist forces captured the presidential palace in Saigon, who officially put an end to the war between America and Vietnam. Yeah. So uh, it's obviously, obviously you, you may find out that um, Vietnam, Vietnamese military forces were after by the American forces, but so why, why, why did the American lose, uh, lose the Vietnamese, the Vietnam War? Well, uh, there are basically there are five reasons. Well, the United States. The first reason is the United States uh, underestimated the the persistence and uh, the organization of national liberation front. Uh, they thought that the National Liberation Front, which is a it is organized uh, organization, mm. which were held and leader by which were held and leader by Vietnamese guerrilla under the leadership of Ho Chi Minh. However, it was uh, it was a an, an official organization, an official organization led by our first president Ho Chi Minh. Uh, and our general um, yeah. Uh, in it, uh, on the first days of uh, establishment, it had its own targets and its own strategies. So everything was uh, just a flow of a fixed plan. So we have a strong organization, uh, strong organization and uh, smart leaders. So, um, yeah. Which was underestimated by the American. And um, the second reason is the unstoppable movement from the north to <coughs> south along uh, the Ho Chi Minh Trail. As I mentioned before, this is the long road uh, connecting the north and the south and a lot of supplies were going through this, this world. Uh, and the people's war conducted by the North Vietnamese, uh, in which everyone played a part. It, we have the same, we have the same, uh, we have the same enemy. We have uh, the same target. So everyone, everyone, every, every Social work was very brave, and they uh, they formed they, they they were brought together the national the national liberation front um, to fight for our independence. And uh, a very important major uh, a very important reason uh, is U.S. like support from Americans and international communities. 
uh, a lot of riots, a lot of protests were held in uh, the America between 1968 and 1973. And um, the lack of understanding about the Vietnamese geography and culture, we have sophisticated geography in Vietnam. And culture with uh, agriculture, uh, agricultural cu culture, and uh, we have um, um, rice, uh, the one rice uh, agriculture culture, uh, so which is uh, you know America was uh, fighting, fighting so hard to to understand our culture, uh, so that so they had never come to understand. Um, Understand exactly about the Vietnamese culture, so it made it more difficult for Americans to uh, you know, to plan their strategies to <coughs> occupy Vietnam. Yeah, and this uh, the basic background information that I want to tell you about the Vietnam-U.S. War. So if you have uh, any more questions that you want to ask me, I will go to more detail. So, thank you very much for your attention.